Need a new playmat? Playing with Power MTG now has merchandise. Go to playwithpowermtg.com to order playmats and t-shirts with more merch on the way. All sales help us grow the channel. You can also support us by purchasing on TCG Player through our affiliate links in the description. We love TCG Player because it gives the best prices online and still supports local game stores. Finally, you can support us directly through Patreon. You'll get access to our community, early access to videos, and even exclusive videos not available anywhere else. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Season 4 is here. We have a whole host of great games in store for you this season, and we thought we would start off strong. Tonight's episode is a Clash of the Titans. We decided to play some of the strongest decks in the format against one another to see who will come out on top. Now. Before you go running to the comments and saying, but Flash Hulk is the single best deck in the format right now and nothing else compares to it, we would tell you that you are correct. Let's just say that there may be a video you might be interested in watching on the channel here in the near future, so stay tuned for that. A quick thanks to all of our Patreons for their support. We really could not do this without you. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link in the description below and check out some of the perks our patrons get. You can also show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. It really helps out a lot. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Folger, piloting Timna the Weaver and Tana the Bloodsower. This deck, called Blood Pod, is a disruption and stacks deck aiming to control the board while finding infinite combos through birthing pod lines such as Kiki Felidar combo and Goblin Sharpshooter plus Splinter Twin. Folger's opening hand contains a survival of the fittest, Enlightened Tutor, Dark Confidant, Leyline of the Void, Vampiric Tutor, Avacyn's Pilgrim, and a Marsh Flats. Next, we have Garrett piloting Najila, the Blade Blossom. This deck is a tempo deck packed with interaction that aims to go infinite with Najila with a few compact combo pieces such as Nature's Will, Derevi Imperial Tactician, and a Druid's Repository. Garrett's opening hand contains a Noxious Revival, Temple Garden, Diabolic Intent, Mox Diamond, Tropical Island, Green Sun Zenith, and a Plunge into Darkness. After that, we have Ryan piloting Timna the Weaver and Thrasios, Triton Hero. This deck, called Consult Scepter Thrasios, uses compact infinite mana combos and seeks to outvalue their opponents while going for the win. Ryan's opening hand contains a Smothering Tithe, Soul Ring, Vampiric Tutor, Birds of Paradise, Ad Nauseum, Savannah, and a Windswept Teeth. Finally, we have Mike piloting the Gitrog Monster. This deck is a fast combo deck that uses the card and mana advantage built into its commander in order to go infinite and win the game. Mike's opening hand contains a Crop Rotation, Autumn's Veil, Force of Vigor, Elvish Mystic, Twilight Mire, Oblivion Crown, and a Nurturing Peatland. Without further ado, let's kick off this gesture of Grand Gentleman grinding great gargantuan gameplay. Garrett wins the Exploding Watermelon Challenge and gets us start us off. But. Folger has a pre-game action and puts Leyline of the Void onto the battlefield, greatly to the dismay of Mike. Garrett plays a Tropical Island for turn. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Temple Garden into exile. He casts a Green Sun Zenith for one. He fetches up a Noble Hierarch and shuffles Green Suns back into its library. Garrett passes the turn. Ryan plays a Savannah for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. He passes. Mike plays a Nurturing Peatland for turn. He taps his Peatland to cast Elvish Mystic. He passes as well. Folger plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it for an Overgrown 2 into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim and gives the turn to Garrett. On his turn, Garrett casts his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. All through, Garrett passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Mike casts Force of Vigor, exiling Autumn's Veil, destroying Ryan's Soul Ring and Folger's Leyline. Ryan plays a Windswept Teeth for turn. He cracks it for a Bayou. He casts a Noble Hierarch and follows up with a Birds of Paradise. He ends his turn. Mike plays a Twilight Mire for turn. He casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Ryan. He looks through Ryan's deck and puts a card into exile. Ryan then shuffles his library. He then immediately casts what he searched through Praetor's Grasp, which was a Mana Crypt. All finished up, Mike gives the turn to Folger. Folger plays a Godless Shrine into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Dark Confidant. He ends his turn. Garrett starts off his turn by attacking Mike with Najila, creating a 1-1 warrior token. 
Noble Hierarch's exalted ability triggers, giving Najila plus one plus one. Mike declares no blocks, and in Garrett's second main, he casts Eldritch Evolution, sacking his newly created warrior. He searches up a Grand Abolisher onto the battlefield. This serves as a real problem for the group, and Garrett gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He thinks for a long time about what he needs to do about the Grand Abolisher, so he decides to hold up mana and pass the turn. Mike starts off his turn by casting his commander, the Gitrog monster. He plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn. He cracks it, triggering Gitrog, drawing a card, and fetching up a bayou onto the battlefield. All through, he ships the turn to Folger. At the end of Mike's turn, Folger casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. During his upkeep, Folger reveals a Tangle Wire through Dark Confidant, which is what he tutored with Vampiric. He casts Tangle Wire. Knowing what is going to happen with Tangle Wire, Ryan decides to act and cast Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam resolves and Ryan reveals a Delay, Mana Confluence, Preordain, Priest of Titania, Demonic Tutor, Time Twister, Toxic Deluge, Chain of Vapor, Force of Will, Snow Covered Island, Flooded Strand, Pack of Negation, Marsh Flats, Brainstorm, Necropotence, Deathrite Shaman, Veil of Summer, Abrupt Decay, and a Dark Confidant. He decides to stop there. This was an especially bad Adnaus, with no fast mana and no win cons in the entire pile. After that, he lets the Tangle Wire resolve. Folger does nothing else and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tangle Wire. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He attacks Ryan with Najila, triggering Noble Hierarch's Exalted Trigger, and Ryan takes five. He cracks the Scalding Tarn for an Underground Sea and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan taps for Tangle Wire. He plays a Tropical Island for turn. He keeps all of his interaction and decides to pass the turn, discarding down to hand size. During Mike's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt Trigger and takes three damage, taps for Tangle Wire, and sacks a land to get Rog, drawing a card. He does nothing else for the turn and passes. During his upkeep, Folger reveals a Felidar Guardian through Dark Confidant, removes a Fade Counter from Tangle Wire, and taps for Tangle Wire. He plays a Root Maze for turn. He passes. At the end of Folger's turn, Garrett casts Vampiric Tutor. Ryan doesn't like that with being at such a low life total, knowing a key piece could put him out of this game. Garrett bargains with Ryan that if he lets this go through, he will not attack him. Ryan agrees, and Garrett fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tangle Wire. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist enters, and Garrett creates three treasures, into play tapped because of Root Maze. He attacks Folger, creating two warriors. Folger takes the damage, and Garrett passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan taps for Tangle Wire. He holds up blockers and mana and passes the turn, discarding down to hand size. During his upkeep, Mike taps for Tangle Wire, sacks the land to get Rog, and rolls for Mana Crypt, winning the roll. He plays a Phyrexian Tower for turn. He plays a Windswept Heath for turn. He cracks it, triggering Gitrog, and fetches up a forest. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding a Swamp, and triggering Gitrog again. All through, he gives the turn to Folger. At the end of Mike's turn, Folger casts Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Null Rod onto the top of his library. During his upkeep, Folger reveals a Null Rod through Dark Confidant, removes a Fade Counter from Tangle Wire, and taps for Tangle Wire. He plays a Bountiful Promenade for turn. He casts Null Rod. In response, Mike taps his rocks for mana before they are shut off. After that, the Null Rod resolves. All through, Folger passes. At the end of Folger's turn, Ryan casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Garrett's Grand Abolisher. I wanted to pause quickly and talk about some misplays that just happened in these last few turns. Right now, with Root Maze on the battlefield, Mike would not have been able to fetch with his Windswept Heath or have his Mox Diamond come into play untapped. Folger should not have had his Bountiful Promenade enter untapped either. With the exception of Mike fetching with Windswept Heath and getting the draw trigger off of Gitrog, nothing else impactful happened to the game as a result of these misplays. That being said, we still wanted to call them out. Anyway, back to the game. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tangle Wire. Also during his upkeep, he pays two life and casts Noxious Revival, putting his Grand Abolisher back on top of his library. In his main phase, wanting to cast Grand Abolisher, Garrett realized he cannot sack his treasures because of Null Rod. Dismayed, and realizing player removal is one form of permanent removal, he attacks Folger with his warrior in Najila, creating four more warriors. 
Folger takes the damage, and in his second main phase, Garrett casts Diabolic Intent, sacking a warrior and fetching up a card into his hand. All through, Garrett passes. During his upkeep, Ryan taps for Tanglewire. He decides to hold up mana and pass the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike casts Worldly Tutor. In response, Ryan casts a spell, countering the tutor. During his upkeep, Mike taps for Tanglewire, sacks a land to get Rog, and wins his Mana Crypt roll. He plays a Gemstone Caverns for turn. He plays a Misty Rainforest as a get Rog land for turn. All through, he passes. During Folger's upkeep, and with Tanglewire on the stack, Garrett casts Silence, shutting off Folger's turn. Still in his upkeep, he taps for Tanglewire and reveals a Fire Covenant off of Dark Confidant. He does nothing else and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tanglewire. He immediately moves to combat. Ryan, knowing that he has Lethal on board if he can get rid of Folger, casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Najila. In response, Garrett casts Plunge into Darkness. In response, Ryan casts Pact of Negation, targeting Plunge. Pact resolves, Plunge is countered, and Chain of Vapor resolves, bouncing Najila. Garrett sacks a land to copy Chain of Vapor, targeting his own Dockside Extortionist. He sacks the land again to bounce the Gitrog monster. In response, Mike casts Entomb, attempting to win. In response, Ryan casts Force of Will, exiling a blue card and paying one life. Mike responds by casting Crop Rotation, sacking Gemstone Caverns, triggering Gitrog. Crop Rotation resolves, and Mike fetches up an Ancient Tomb onto the battlefield. With nothing else, the stack resolves, and Garrett finally moves to combat. He attacks Folger with all of his warriors. Folger blocks and takes a rest. All through, Garrett ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan stacks his triggers. He pays for Pact of Negation first, then taps for Tanglewire. All tapped out, he does nothing else and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage and taps for Tanglewire. He attacks Folger with a 1-1 Spirit, killing him. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast the Gitrog monster. He casts Sylvan Scrying. Scrying resolves, and he fetches up a Dakmore Salvage into his hand. He taps his Phyrexian Tower, sacking the Spirit for two black. He casts Oblivion Crown. Knowing the game is over, Mike shows his loot. Mike uses Oblivion Crown's ability, discarding Dakmore Salvage. This triggers Gitrog's draw ability. Mike uses the Dredge ability of Dakmore Salvage to replace the draw with a Dredge 2, putting two cards from the top of his library into his graveyard, and then returning Dakmore to his hand. He repeats this ability over and over, drawing when he dredges lands, and shuffling his graveyard into his library whenever he mills one of his Eldrazi Titans he has in his library. With enough of these multiple triggers firing as he performs this loop, he then stacks multiple Gitrog triggers onto the stack, drawing multiple cards into his hand. He casts Dark Ritual, adding 3 black to his pool. He continues the Gitrog loop, shuffling Dark Ritual into his library through an Eldrazi Titan Shuffle, and then drawing Dark Ritual again through the Gitrog Draws. He uses one of the floating mana to cast Dark Ritual again. He does this for infinite black mana. He then casts Lotus Petal and sacks it over and over again for infinite green mana in the same way he generated infinite black mana through Dark Ritual. He discards Deathrite Shaman and then casts Finale of Devastation where X is greater than 10, reanimating Deathrite from his graveyard and giving it haste. He then discards an instant or sorcery into his graveyard and then activates Deathrite, exiling the card, draining his opponents for two. He then sacrifices Deathrite through a spell like Culling the Weak, putting it into his graveyard, shuffling it back in again, and repeating the loop. He does this enough times to drain the entire table and win the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I have got to say, that game was brilliant. A lot of this game was played in insteps, upkeeps, and combat phases. With such high power levels, everyone was afraid to go off for fear of retaliation. There were a lot of hard choices that had to be made at critical points during the game. This was also one of those games where the place you sat at the table made a real difference in how the game was played. Congrats to Mike on his win. He stayed patient and looked for the right opportunity to go off and win the game playing through setbacks and threatening positions. Folger's stacks pieces really did good work in controlling the board. In the end, his lack of effective reactionary spells is what did him in. Garrett was definitely putting pressure on the board and every spell he casts or even threatened to cast was putting the table on alert. 
Ryan's ad nauseum gave him a lot of interaction, but nothing really proactive. Had he countered the Tango Wire, he may have been in a better position, but his fear of an instant speed win at any time from Gitrog or Grand Abolisher locking out of his interaction put him in a really tough spot. The player of the game was Garrett. He held the strongest board position the whole time and was able to race his opponents and everyone was reacting to his every move. The most valuable card goes to Tango Wire. The only reason this game even made it to turn 7 was because of this card. Its ability to immediately shut down opponents and its ability to break parity right away made this card have the biggest impact on the board. Well, that about wraps it up for our season premiere. Tune in next time when we will duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.